Hello, my most amazing artist. I know what you're thinking. Who's that? My disguise is pretty amazing, but it's me. It's Miss Stevens. It's art class with Cassie. I'm so glad that you're here because today we're going to be making our own superhero disguises. But before we do, let's go ahead and do our art class catchphrase. I make messes. I make mistakes, but deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. All right, are you ready, superheroes, to make your costume today? It's really easy. All you're going to need is some construction paper. If you don't have construction paper, white paper would be great. We're just going to have to color it into different colors with markers or crayons. You'll also need markers and crayons, two toilet paper tubes if you want to make big cuffs, if you want to make smaller cuffs, then one toilet paper tube is fine. Scissors and glue. Okay, ahem. I pick a promise to do my best, to have a positive super attitude, and to finish what I start. Ah, speaking, by the way, of construction paper, I'd like to do a shout out to our friends at Dixon Ticonderoga, who make, by the way, not just the best pencils on the planet, but the best construction paper. It's called True Ray, and it's the most magical, colorful thing ever. They're providing me with the supplies I'm using, so a great big old high five, and fist pump, and a shout out to them. All right, guys, go grab your supplies, and let's get started. All right, guys, today we're going to begin by making our cuffs first, and then we'll move on to our mask. So if you don't want to do the cuffs, you can just kind of zippity doo dah right through what I'm about to show you and move on to the masks. To do the cuffs, though, you can either make a small cuff like this, two small cuffs. If you're making two small cuffs, then you'll just need one toilet paper tube. If you want to make two big cuffs, then you'll need two full-size tubes. Maybe you just want to make one big cuff, in which case you just need one tube. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do both, but I'm going to be making one big cuff and then two small cuffs. So if you want to make one big cuff, your first step is to hold your toilet paper tube vertically, and you're going to take scissors starting at the bottom and cut to the top. Now, a toilet paper tube is made out of cardboard, which means it's a little thick, so it can be a little tricky. So, ugh, it's a good thing that you're a super kid and you have lots of muscles. So if I'm making one cuff, all I do is cut it just like that. If you wanna make two cuffs, the first step is the same, starting at the bottom, cutting to the top, but then you'll want to open the tube a little bit Open it up and notice how I have it going vertically. It's going up and down. Since I have it going vertically, I'm now going to take my marker and draw a line like this. Now that I've got my line drawn, I will use my scissors and cut on my line. Boop, just like that. All right, so now, but when I opened it up a little bit, it did kind of flatten. So you might have noticed that I was working on curving it back inward a little bit. There we go. Curve it back inward a little bit. There we go. Okay, cool. So now I have two cuffs or one big cuff. Let's work on the big cuff first. So if I made two, two big cuffs, then I will need to do two designs. So for that, I'm going to take my piece of paper. Now I've got three different colors of construction paper picked out. These are my three colors for my superhero. Usually a superhero has three colors that as soon as you see them, you're like, that's Batman, that's Superman, that's Iron Man, that's Superwoman. So think about what your three colors will be. And if you're making big cuffs, Go ahead and take the background paper, the paper that you want to have in the background. What color would you like in the background? Have it go horizontally like me. Go ahead and fold it in half. 
fold it in half. Now you have a choice here. You could leave your paper plain like this, just with the color, or you could take your marker and decorate the paper. If you decorate the paper, you could use any colors you want to. You might want to consider using a color that's a part of your, your three color scheme, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and decorate my paper with a dark green marker now. You don't have to decorate your paper, but it might just make your superhero cuffs just a little bit more extra special. If you're wondering what to draw, think about different kinds of lines. If your superhero is fast, zigzag line might show that. Straight lines, wavy lines, it's up to you. You are the artist, so get real creative when you do this step. All right, now that I have my paper decorated, here's what you need to do. If you have two large cuffs, then you will need to fold your paper in half. The reason we're folding our paper in half is because we want to make two papers that are going to be exactly the same and we only want to have to do it one time. If you're making the little cuffs, just hang tight. I'll show you what to do next. Now I'm taking this cuff. Do you see this line right here? I'm matching it up with the bottom of the paper unrolling the cuff. Oh, it's a little tricky to do, but I can do it. Let's see if I can get it matched up again because it moved around a bit. Hold it still, hand. Okay, Miss Stevens. Now I'm gonna trace this line, tracing the top. Now I'll trace down the side, okay? It's a little bit of a wonky tracing job, but I think I've got the idea. When you cut this out, cut on the outside of your line, that way it'll make your paper just a little bit bigger. It's better to always have it be a little bigger than too small. Okay, so let's see. All right, so I've got my two papers. This will be wrapped around my two big cuffs. But what if you made a smaller cuff? Well, I've got some extra paper here. It's the same process. Start with this line, unravel or unroll it to here. Draw a line at the top and a line down the side. Cut it out. All right, now that we've got that part complete, that's the background paper, we now need to think about two more things. We need to think about this, what we're gonna call it the middle ground paper. And then you need to think about what your symbol or your emblem will be. So let's start with that background paper. What shape could you have right there? You could have a simple shape like a circle. You could have a square, a triangle, a shield shape. So be thinking about that, but notice how I'm laying my papers out now horizontally. Let's say that you wanna do a background shape that's a circle. You wanna make sure to draw this shape pretty big because what you don't wanna have is end up with a little bitty circle, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some paper because I want two that are the same, I'm folding my paper in half. Now for this one, I think I want a circle. So I could draw a circle, or what might help is to find a circle somewhere and trace the circle. So I found me a circle, set it right there near the edge so I can save or conserve all that paper and trace. There we go, look at that perfect circle. What if I wanna have a different shape for my smaller ones? Maybe I want a shield shape. I'll show you how I draw a shield. You draw your shield any way you want to, but keep in mind, draw it big. So I'm gonna start with kind of like a V shape. Then I'm gonna put a little polka dot above the V in the middle. Curve towards the V. Curve towards the V. Okay, keeping my paper folded, I'm going to cut these out. I wonder why I'm keeping my paper folded. What do you think that might be? Well, it's that awesome trick. It really makes it so you only have to do something once, but you end up with double. It's a two for one special. Those can get glued there. Let's see how my shield turns out. I've got my paper's stacked, so I only have to do it once. Once you've got your shape cut out, 
You can go ahead, put a little glue around the edges and glue them in place. Let's see, moment of truth, ta-da. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and glue mine down. While you're gluing yours down, you might wanna be thinking about what emblem do you want? What little symbol could you create that will go in the middle of your middle ground shape? Notice I'm only putting glue around the edges and I'm not using a lot of glue. A little bit of glue will do. Okay, so I've got those in place. Next up, I'm gonna work on my symbol. Let's see. I think this really bright color will be great. It's a scrap piece of paper. It's the perfect size. Um, I think I'm gonna fold it in half because I want to. Maybe on this one, I'll do a lightning bolt. So here's how I draw a lightning bolt. I start with a nice big zigzag. At the top of the zigzag, I make a long horizontal line. Then I copy that zigzag, but end up at the point. Boop. Keeping my paper folded, I'll go ahead and cut it out. Zigzags are a little hard to cut out because you do have to pivot. Pivot means turn. You do have to pivot your scissors quite a bit. Make sure to hold those two pieces of paper together so you get that two for one special and cut it out and then we can glue it down. Let's see, how did my bolts turn out? Oh, cool. Okay, this is looking pretty nifty. If I wanted to do a star, stars can be hard to draw. I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice big piece of paper to show you. I want two. When I draw a star, I start with the letter A. Starting at the bottom of the A, I go over. Starting at the bottom of the A, I go over. Cut across. I went really fast and I have been practicing. So I did make that look pretty easy. But just know that you can always pause, try again. The key is to not draw it too small. Everybody wants to draw things really tiny. That means people can't see it. Also, it means it's really difficult to cut out. Okay, now that I have this done, I'm gonna go ahead, glue my things in place. Just a reminder, when you're using your glue, you only need a dot, not a lot. And if you don't have glue, tape would work. You could also use a glue stick. Once things are glued down, you can continue to decorate, making your cuffs and making your mask even more special. Once they're finished, holding your paper vertically, put glue at the top and bottom, hold it in place for a while to really give it enough grab time. Maybe count to 10, maybe count to 20. If it does come unstuck, then just re-hold it. You don't have to add more glue. Woo, look at that cuff, it looks awesome. To do the other smaller cuffs, it's the same thing. Glue goes at the top and bottom of the tall vertical. Hold it in place. You might wanna count for a little while. I know that step is not very fun, but the longer you hold it, the more likely it will be to stick. You're giving your glue enough grab time. Then you just repeat the process for your last one. All right, now that all my cuffs are finished, I have so many different kind of superhero cuffs, I can start to work on my superhero mask. So let's talk about that. Get a nice brand new piece of construction paper. You're going to need to make sure that it's going side to side or horizontally. Let me move some of my masterpieces out of the way. And then your next step is you're going to be folding this piece of paper in half from the left side to the right side. Now this is really important. You need to make sure that your fold is on the left side. You'll need to make sure your fold is on the left side. How do I know which hand is my left hand? It's the hand that makes the L. Sure, this hand makes an L, but it's backwards. It's an imposter. This is your left hand. So taking your left hand, you're going to now take a couple of fingers, maybe two, maybe three, and have them match up the bottom of the paper right there. So I've got them matched up right there on the fold. It's really important that you're on the fold, put a little polka dot right there and move your finger out of the way. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Three fingers up, there we go. 
What I'm going to do next is make a curved line, curved line that almost looks like the other half of a rainbow. So if you imagine I'm drawing a rainbow, it starts here, that's the peak of the rainbow, the top part, and then it comes down. So what I could do is have a little landing spot for it. Maybe I want it to land all the way over there. So I'm gonna do a little air drawing with my imaginary other half of my rainbow and then this one. And then I'll go ahead and make that curved line. And if I miss my landing spot, it's okay. I just kind of brought my line over. Practice with your finger if you need to. Then I need to bring that line back up to here. So I'm just going to take it from here and then it's like an airplane taking off. Boink. Now what I need to do is make the top of my mask. To make the top of your mask, for this one, for mine, I've just been making a curved line. But you could do a zigzag line. You could do a line and then a up and down for maybe Batman style ears. You could do a point like a unicorn horn and then we'll go across. You decide, practice with your finger. I'm going to take my finger and this time do four fingers up from my last dot. And I'm going to make a line that goes all the way over and then curves down but you could make any kind of line design you want. Give it some thought before you dive in. So there's my mask shape. Now, in the middle of this line, about one finger away from the crease, I'm putting a dot. This is where the eye opening for me, that's where it's going to begin. And with my finger, I'm just drawing an oval over and over again. If I make the oval really small, I'm never going to be able to see out from there. So practice with your finger first. If I'm going too fast, just pause me and I'll stop. All right, there we go. Now our mask part is complete. Keeping it folded, cut it out. Now the reason that it was so important that we did this on the fold is because the fold is what holds it together. The fold is what holds it together. If you accidentally drew it on the open side, then you're gonna end up with two halves of a mask, which you can fix with tape or you can try it again. But I need to get this part out now. Here's a little trick. I'm just gonna pinch it right there in the eyeball. Sorry, you pinch it in the eyeball. Sorry, make a little cut there. Make a little cut there open it and now I have this really weird diamond shape. But it gives my scissors a place to dive in and start cutting. So I'm gonna rotate, I'm cutting slowly because it's kind of tricky when you have that little opening to cut in, but you can do it. All right, let's check it out. Boop. Moment of truth will be when you hold it up to your face, can you see out of it? If when you hold it up to your face, you can't see, then take it off and problem solve. Are the eyes too far apart? In which case you'll just need to refold and curve it in a little bit closer. If the eyes too small, cut them bigger. If they're too big, that's okay. Then you can actually see. The better to see you with, right? Now let's talk about how to decorate your mask. You could make a crown like this. You can make um, a dot. I can't dog the ears like how Batman has. So think about what you want to add. Grab a piece of paper. I'm looking for some scrap paper so I can start to recycle, but I don't think I have any. I've been doing pretty good about recycling my paper. Oh, here's a piece. So I'm going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to make a crown. So I'm going to take a piece of paper and fold it in half. Not because I'm making two crowns, but because I want it to be symmetrical, like how my mask is the exact same on both sides. So starting on my fold, I'm going to make a line that goes, uh, let's see, maybe I'll use my fingers again on the fold. It'll start here, and maybe it'll end somewhere over here, about one finger up. So if I'm making a crown, I could do a zigzag shape, I could do a bumpy zigzag shape. I could do any kind of line design that I want to. 
if you wanted to do those Batman style ears or cat girl or something like that, fold your paper in half and then draw two big triangle shapes. Now, keeping this folded, cut it out and you'll end up with two ears that you can glue right in the back. Perfect! And like I was saying earlier, if you wanted to make it a unicorn, you could cut out a great big tall triangle and glue that in the back too. How awesome would that be? If you're doing a crown, then you can just keep your paper folded. Again, not because we're making two, but because we want it to be symmetrical. So I'm pivoting my paper, cutting back and forth. Let's see how this goes. And ta-da! Ooh, that looks really good. Oh, I like it better in the back. You decide before you go ahead and glue it down. Now, once you've got this made, what emblem from your cuffs can you repeat and showcase on your mask somewhere? So let's see, maybe I'll go ahead and cut out a big circle and maybe add another lightning bolt. You could add a star or heart. Who's to say you can't do something totally different? So I'm gonna get some scrap paper and see what I've got. Got a nice piece of this paper. I think I'll do a big circle. <gasps> no, I think I'll do a big heart. You know what would have been an easier way to do a heart instead of like that? Hello, fold it in half, draw half of a heart, just like we've been doing for the mask and like we've been doing for the a crown that we made. Let's see, there we go. I could glue that in the middle and then maybe a little lightning bolt or a star or anything else. I know that your masks are going to look amazing. When you're finished with your mask, ooh, yeah, I like it. I like how it goes down over the nose. It's kind of like a broken heart. When you're finished with your mask, you can take a hole puncher and you're going to need to punch you could use a pencil if you don't have it. You're going to need to put two holes, one and another in your mask. Once you've got your two holes in your mask, you'll need some yarn to tie your mask. So you'll want to have a piece of yarn that's pretty long. So when I get my yarn, I pull it from the center here. If you don't have yarn, you could use thread, you could use string and I'm just going to slide it in and tie it right here with the double knot. And there you have it. You guys have just created your very own superhero costume. Think about all of the different ways you can really make yours different and unique. If you had fun, don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up that means other friends will be able to find it. And don't forget to subscribe because new videos are posted all the time. Have fun guys and I'll see you real soon.